Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs and I'm working on Christmas cards this week and I'm using the Christmas season bundle. It's a really great stamp set um, with some beautiful images. Um, but another thing I'm gonna show you on this card is how I created this uh, background. It is emboss, embossing paste um, that I tinted and I used a mat twice to make this plaid background. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to show you also how I made each of these little elements. Um, the Christmas season bundle looks like this, has a giant set of dies. Um, the, these cut out the images and these are my favorite labels. Um, I'm going to have uh, two other videos using this bundle on YouTube and my blog. So make sure you check those out. All right, let's make the background because it's going to take some drying time. Um, this is embossing paste. We have two different kinds of embossing paste, the matte, which is what I'm using, and the shimmer. Um, we're going to need, you're going to need grid paper, you're going to need paper towels, you're going to need um, some um, post-it tape, or you could use washi tape, but I like post-it tape better. It doesn't rip your paper. Um, for this, we're actually going to tape it down to the grid paper because it's exactly the size that we need and we don't want uh, to, you know, if we put tape down on it, then when we emboss, the tape will be in the way, it'll be in our image. So I'm just putting it down on to my grid paper with some stamp and seal. Now we're gonna take the Adorning Accent Matte. It's like a candy cane stripe. And I'm gonna tape it down. I'm using my grid paper. I'm using the lines here to kind of keep everything straight. I'm going to put that down and I'm going to take my um, post-it tape and put that down kind of generously. I don't want it to come up. You'll find that these little guys kind of slip a little bit when you're putting the embossing paste on. It didn't seem to mess up my background, but I just want that um, mask to be in place. I don't want it to slip. Now I'm going to get some, I've got my silicone mat here. And in my embossing paste, I put down some press and seal um, to keep it from drying out. I push it down so that it's actually touching the embossing paste. I find that that kind of keeps it from drying out. Now I'm going to scoop out some embossing paste here. And that's probably too much. Um, <laughs> you'll find that you never can quite um, figure out exactly how much you need. But I'm actually going to emboss this twice. So I'd rather have more too much than too little because um, then I'd have to make some more and I wouldn't want to do that. All right, now what I have done here is added about two drops of soft suede ink refill. These are our re-inkers that you use to um, ink your re-ink your ink pad when it gets dry. And you can tint your embossing paste in any of our colors, which is really great. Um, I'm gonna just mix it, mix, mix, mix until I got a nice um, solid color. I don't want any kind of, you know, swirls where it's miscolored. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of it like this and I'm just gonna start, it's like icing a cake. And I'm gonna follow the direction of the mat. Okay, follow that. And go gently. This is where I was talking about your mat, uh, mask lifting up. Uh, the first time I did it, I was just kind of like a little speed demon going fast. And the, and I kept catching the mat with my palette knife. And it would lift it up, which then, you know, can cause the embossing paste to slip underneath. Now, I've made sure that I've filled in all those lines. And now I'm going to take my palette knife and scrape off any of the excess. Any of the little divots or lines that you see in the paste will be there when you when it's dry. So I like to just really kind of make sure it's all nice and smooth. There's not a whole lot of texture. Now, we're gonna need to give this some drying time. And the problem is that embossing paste dries like cement, like concrete. So I'm gonna kind of get all of this right here in a little puddle so that it'll stay, um, you know, it won't dry out. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and lift it up. 
Isn't that beautiful? You could leave it just like that if you wanted, but I'm gonna do that plaid. I'm gonna run to the sink and wash this off. And we're gonna give this some time to dry. It doesn't take too long. I think about five minutes would be plenty of time. All right, I've given it about five minutes to dry. Um, it's probably still a little bit soft. Maybe another 10 minutes would be pretty good, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'm gonna take my mask, I've cleaned it. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it this way. Okay, I'm gonna line it up with that grid paper. You can use that same tape. Put that on there. Let's see if I can get that one peeled up like that. And now we'll take what we have left and this time we'll go this direction. Now, once you're done, you need to clean your palette knife and your silicone mat and your mat really good. Don't leave them sitting even for five minutes. Um, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> this stuff is seriously like concrete, like cement, and it will dry hard and it does not come off. So make sure that you immediately Take it to the sink, rinse it. I just rinse it with water. Usually it comes off. You can use some dish soap too if you feel like you need to. Okay, now scrape all that excess off. Look, I did pretty good with guessing how much I needed. All right, let's look at all of our, all of our lines. Make sure everything is nice and smooth. And then we're gonna really give it some time to dry. It's gonna need a good 10 minutes. I can't seem to get that smooth right there. All right, I think that's gonna be good. Let's see how we look. <gasps> Isn't that fun? You can see the color difference already from the lower, um, the lower um, embossed paste, it's starting to dry, so it dries a little bit different colored, but it'll all be the same color once it's done. Okay, I'm gonna run, go clean all this, and then we'll move on and do the other parts of our card. All right, let's start stamping all of our elements while we um, wait for our background to dry. I'm gonna use cinnamon cider. I am using the two larger pine cones. Um, there is one that's the, like a background and one that's a, um, the foreground. Um, I found that stamping the foreground image first is easier than stamping the background first. Um, they don't necessarily line up perfectly, um, but you can get it pretty close. They're, they're kind of abstract, kind of a watercolor look, so they're not going to be perfect. Even with my Stamparatus, I found that I couldn't get them exactly right. All right, so Cinnamon Cider, now I'm gonna use the back part, the back layer, and cinnamon cider also, and I'm going to stamp off on my grid paper, and then I'm going to come down, I'm going to have to pull it down, hopefully you guys can see, and you can see these holes right here, you can line them up for the most part in with those larger sections, okay? So don't, don't be too hard on yourself if yours don't line up perfectly, they are meant to be abstract. All right, so there we go. We've got our two pine cones. Now we're gonna stamp the little sprig, the larger sprig in Old Olive on pear pizzazz cardstock. All right, whoops, let's try that again. Let's do it on the back side. I need my foam mat for this table. That's why cardstock has two sides, did you know? <laughs> the first the first side is practice, the second side is for perfection. All right, now let's see. The last thing we're gonna do is stamp the sentiment. I'm using the sentiment from Joyful Season. Um, this is a great stamp set. Um, the Christmas season stamp set that we're using doesn't have sentiments, um, so you'll want to pull uh, sentiments from other um, stamp sets. All right, now I'm gonna mask off because I don't want all of this stuff up here. So I'm gonna just take my post-it tape again and mask off that, that little, I don't know what it is, holly and holly, I don't know, sprigs or something. We don't want it on this, this one. 
All right, let's ink that in real red. Get it nice and inked up. Take that off. Don't forget to take the tape off and stamp that right in the middle. Okay, now we've got lots of cutting to do. So let's bring over our cut and emboss machine. All right, the first thing we'll do are these larger shapes right here. Okay, I've got the pine cone, the large pine cone and the large sprig. And we will put both of those, line them up, look at the top and the bottom. Okay. Put your top plate on, run it through, and now we'll do the other two. And I think this time we'll also do that gold piece. Um, I decided not to stamp the another sprig. I wanted just a, a gold piece, so we'll use that. We're gonna use this larger um, die. There is an image that goes with that one if you do wanna stamp it. Okay, get those lined up. If you find that yours, like my craft paper is a little bit warped, if you're worried about it slipping, when you go through, use that post-it tape. Again, I'm telling you that post-it tape is a lifesaver in the in your craft space. You can use it all kinds of ways. It's basically just a post-it note stickiness on tape. All right, so now I have used, oh, well, well, come back, come back. We forgot, we forgot one, we forgot one. I am using this label. We're gonna make it shorter, okay? We're gonna cut this sentiment out and I needed it to be shorter. So I'm gonna put it on here like this. We're gonna cut it twice. Okay, so run that through, bring it back to the other side. And then we're gonna take this die and we're just gonna set it down on there like that to cut off that end to make it shorter. Okay, let's see how we did. There we go, we've made ourselves a smaller shape. You can make those dies work for you. Just think outside the box. Okay, now I have also used the larger label right here um, for this piece. Th this set of dies is fantastic. Um, I am been I have been using the label dies in this set over and over and over again. They're so great. All right, now we've got all our pieces. Let's put it all together, and then we'll bring back our embossed. Um, our embossed piece. All right, let's see if I have enough dimensionals here. It looks like I'm gonna need some more. Um, let's start with our pine cones, okay? And then we'll build everything out from there. So two dimensionals, and I'm putting the dimensionals down low because I'm gonna slip things underneath or behind them, okay? I'm gonna take my sprigs and I'm gonna add some liquid glue and we'll put that one back there like that and we'll put this one back here like that and push it down to get it to stick and then we'll get our gold i think we'll do dimensionals on this but i'm gonna have to cut my dimensionals up because i am running low let's see Gonna need a little bit smaller. All right, and we're gonna put that back there like that. Okay. And we'll take our sentiment. Let's see if I can get these dimensionals to come off. Come on. And we're gonna put that right there. Now I've got this wonderful um, Playful Pets ribbon. It's a real red stitched, double stitched. 
I'm gonna take that ribbon, fold it in half, and tie myself a bow. Okay, you don't have to do that double bow. You can do a single bow. Okay, mini glue dots, and put that right there. Well, let's move it down a little bit right there. All right. Okay, now let's bring back our embossed piece. Let's see how it is. Hopefully we've had enough time to dry. I think so. Now, you'll find that your paper is a little bit warped because of all of that embossing paste. So what I like to do is to get another piece of cardstock and adhere it down to this so that it'll lay flat on my card. So put a lot of adhesive there on your cardstock. Whoops. And take your piece, line it up, <clears throat> and press it down. Now, that way it won't be warped on your card base. All right, more dimensionals. And I'm just gonna use these larger sections for my for underneath. Well, let's do one more. That's a really great use for those edges of your dimensionals. Isn't that a fun background? I love it so much. You guys know I love plaid and gingham. So when I was looking at this emboss or this uh, mask, I thought, oh yes, I know what we're gonna do with that. All right, now for this guy. Take your dimensionals, can't believe I don't have any dimensionals here, and put them behind your other pieces so that it won't be seen. Okay, let's do one more right over here. And put that in right there, isn't that gorgeous? All right, now for the inside, you're gonna get your same pieces, right? Your same, the same things that we had. We're gonna stamp that front layer of our pine cone first in cinnamon cider. Then get your, let's see, I lost my grid paper again. We'll use this. Stamp off and line it up. There we go. And then last but not least, grab these little dots and we'll stamp those in real red right there, okay? It's a nice way to make the inside of your card fancy, okay? And there you have it, a fun Christmas card with a really fun background. Um, make sure you hop back over to my blog, grab the supply sheet. Um, it will have everything you need on it, the supplies and measurements, um, as well as two other Christmas season projects. Thanks everybody for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Let me know if you have questions. Bye-bye.